few weeks we've been following the work of the Wildwood Trust in Kent. Now, it hopes to secure the future of Britain's endangered species and reintroduce them into the countryside. Something that's uh, easier said than done. Nice bit of rabbit. The mission at Wildwood is to replenish our woodlands by breeding endangered wildlife. Set in 40 acres, there are animals from over 50 species. The charity hopes to release many of them into the countryside. But some will have to remain contained. These are hand breeds. One of the big attractions are the wildcats. They may look like family pets, but don't be fooled. Yeah, my cavity is a wild cat. He was born last year to Hamish and Flora. Um, and the reason why he's in an enclosure on his own is that um, he's got a bit boisterous now, um, gone through his teenage years, and uh, we had to be separated from his parents. He will be paired up with another wild cat female so that we can start breeding from him so that we can retire Flora and Hamish. And what they're trying to do at the moment is they're trying to net him. Um, and as you can see, he's not actually playing ball. Ah, he's done that now. And... There we go. And now the, um, the net can come in. So this is exactly the same process as um, domestic and cats and dogs get with the uh, microchipping. It just goes under the, the skin. Using nets um, seems to work quite nicely. As you can see, once you've got him, you can then restrain him and hold him, and he doesn't have to have any anaesthetics or drugs. Conditions are actually quite good. Um, feeling along the spine, you're feeling along the muscle layers there. Feeling the skin it seems to be in quite good condition. Abdomen feels absolutely fine. Heart rate's good, and the respiratory rate is also good. They're wild cats, and they're wild by name, wild by nature. They are untamable and um, they are um, very rare, it's about 400 or so left in the wild in the UK, up in Scotland. Plenty of work also goes into inspiring young wildlife lovers. We're doing a murder mystery and it's going to be your job to find out who killed Mr Bunny. Off you go, good luck. <laughs> They are solving the mystery of who killed Mr Bunny. So this is our version of CSI, but all with wild animals, because that's what we're about here. Is that real good? They're doing things like matching up fur samples and feather samples and poo samples to work out who's been at the crime scene. What's this one? Oh. Oh. That's stoned. Stoned? Yeah. And then when they get on to the later clues, they'll be looking at things like blood and trace evidence and has the body been moved to work out which of their suspects actually did it. Some spots of blood were found at the crime scene. We took a swab and it's in a plastic bag. Is it blood? Does it turn pink? Yes. Yeah. Yes, so we found some blood. <laughs> what was your favourite clue? Blood. The blood one. Blood. 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 And so if you'd looked very carefully and paid attention to all the clues, you will hopefully have written down on your sheet that the killer is... Polecat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well done, everybody! Over at Stodmarsh, Martin is checking on a Wildwood success story. These are conic horses. Um, essentially, they are the closest um, living examples of uh, tarpans, which are the original um, prehistoric horse, from which all horses derive, essentially. The tarpan was the progenitor from the, you know, things like the Shetland all the way up to the um, Shire horse. So we're checking their identities because what we'll be doing over the next few months um, is that Wildwood's actually going to be creating a new herd at a new site. What was that one? 5137. 5137, that's supposed to be, yeah, that's supposed to be bad. so inquisitive. No, 990. Ah, okay. You can tell a tarpan because you've got the dorsal stripe, 
down their back, the colour of their coat, which is this brown dun colour, and unfortunately, because they're coming into their winter coats, you can't see it so much, but in the summer, you will see on the back of their legs and on the front legs, in fact, you can see it slightly on this one just here, you'll see there's like, looks like a zebra striping. They're very happy here, and in all the other places that we're at as well, they're doing an absolutely brilliant job of managing the landscape um, without human intervention and actually protecting these really rare um, pieces of land that would disappear, actually, truth be told, without this type of management. Sometimes it would need people doing this. Instead here, we've got these lovely horses doing this sort of job. So to bring them back actually helps to manage these types of habitats properly.